A few days ago, my friends and I went herping in our native southern Ontario, Canada. Our goal was to find salamanders, as it is currently their breeding season and many species migrate to vernal pools to copulate and deposit eggs. That's where we're headed. I'm looking at the field guide for our native reptiles and amphibians. Excellent. Spotted yes, salamander, Amastoma maculatum. We have a specimen right here. Hello, hello. Oh no, the other one's here. So we're just here at a vernal pool. And we have Matt. Number one. Matt number two. Or vice versa. Brayden. And myself. And so we are delicately or gently lifting logs around this vernal pool here. What is a vernal pool? Vernal pools, also called vernal ponds or ephemeral pools, are temporary pools of water that provide habitat for distinctive plants and animals. Here where the salamanders will move to breed. And so what we do is wearing gloves, of course, to protect the animals from the oil in our skin. We gently lift the logs as I mentioned and take a look at them. Now the thing is when you lift a log like this you need to make sure that you remove the salamanders, place the log back down and put them beside the edge of it so they can go back under themselves because you run the risk of basically crushing the animal if it shifts at all while you uh, lifted the log right so but in any case we wanted to show you these animals they're so beautiful and they're quite lethargic and cold just from uh, how cold it is right now. So again, this is a spotted salamander. So we have one specimen here. And the other one is right here. The second one in here. I'm not sure we might have to move this one. I'm not convinced that the log won't damage it at all. So maybe we should move it too. There's quite a few cavities in here. I'm not gonna go digging through, but you can feel that they must have chambers under here and we don't wanna disturb them too much. You can see there too. So probably some salamanders are in there as well. But yeah, this is uh, quite extraordinary. So we'll gently move this specimen out because frankly, I don't want it to get crushed. And this, the ground here is ice cold. I can see my breath here, but look at that beautiful animal. Another thing we do is so these specimens are all in close proximity of each other. We will toss, well, collect gloves and swap gloves out between areas just in case one population by misfortune is contaminated with any kind of fungal infection or anything of the sort. We don't want to risk spreading that by handling them, right? Mishandling them. So it's very important as well. But this is really great to see that the population here is thriving and while we don't want to disturb too many logs we just lift the odd few here and there to see what we can find um, we also are hoping to find some of the jefferson salamanders so hopefully we'll see a few of those all right guys so we have a spotted salamander here and we're going to be releasing the animal back to the exact location we found it so first thing we do is we will gently place the piece of wood back the positioning it was in. There we go. And then the animal. As mentioned before, you don't want to just lift the log and put it back down and risk crushing the animal if it's moved at all. So, salamander gets gently placed back down. And when it's ready, it can move back under. Now over here, from this log, we had a few salamanders found in around the area. This specific specimen was found on this side. This one was found right here in this hole. And this one here was found in the leaf litter right over there. So salamanders have costal grooves, which are these grooves along the body there between their front and hind legs. 
And so spotted salamanders have anywhere from 11 to 13, and these can be used to help identify and differentiate different species. Incredible. Do you think these guys are fully grown? No. We're looking in the different spots here. We've moved a few logs. Um, you want to go through the leaf litter and kind of just gently moving through. And we're putting the leaf litter right back after, but you're under logs like this. So these little cavity areas here is where you'll find them. So here we have another yellow spotted salamander. If we do a temperature reading here, like the ground is frozen basically. So 0 0.6 degrees Celsius, zero Celsius. So this is frozen essentially. The animal's body temperature is one degree centigrade. If we turn the mode to Fahrenheit, for those of you that deal with that, 30.4 30 30 Fahrenheit, the animal's temperature, 32. Incredible. Simply incredible. You can see my breath, like it's, it's cold. So first, the leaf litter goes back because that helps to some degree insulate the animals barrier from the frost the wood goes back exactly where it was found and then the rest of the leaf litter that was over it comes back to insulate the area and then the animal is then gently placed here so it can in its own time when it's ready crawl back under safely without harming itself incredible just incredible Thanks, dude. So this is the endangered Jefferson salamander. Matt has his guide here. <laughs> so that is the Amistoma jeffersonianum. And so this species is actually quite large. This is the largest specimen we found tonight, right boys? I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Due to the nature of its, um, I guess, status. status we're really refraining from touching it. The log that we found it under is right here. It's been replaced back and we're gonna move the leaf litter back in and then allow it to crawl back under. But we wanted to take the opportunity to show you guys this beautiful animal before it goes back into hiding, so. Habitat loss is the primary cause for this species increasing disappearance and endangered status. It was truly a gift to be able to observe this animal in the wild. So for identification purposes, you're supposed to count the costal grooves, which are kind of these fatty grooves you can see along the length of the body, and that's where the ribs are. So you're supposed to begin behind the first leg, and you would count the rows back. So we probably have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you can, the last one is above the rear leg, and that would be the Jefferson in the guide so it's a good match we kind of know what we're talking about uh, and the yellow spotted would have 11 and then you add two additional ones to the count for the ones that exist behind the rear legs interesting to note Matt observed that this animal does possess a single yellow spot which may possibly be some form of indication that there's possibly a hybridization occurring yeah. in the population but it's known that at least between the blue spotted salamanders and the Jefferson salamanders, they do steal chromosomes. Uh, it's a super interesting occurrence. All right, let's let this animal go because it's time. Yeah, I'll just try.
By this point in our evening, things had gotten pretty dark out, so we really needed to mind our footing and use our flashlights to see where we were going. So here we've, we found uh, two specimens under this log, this really long log here. Um, we're about, I don't know, I'd say 75 feet away from the vernal pool. These are Plethodon scenarius is the scientific name. And we've got two color morphs or color phases here. We've got the red back and we've got the lead back, which I guess is like the more normal phase. So they commonly call these the red back salamander? Yeah. Or the lead back? Red or lead back. And that's these... an adult size, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I haven't seen any too much bigger than this. There's, they seem to be a lot more active than the, the larger. Sure. Maybe it's the size too, like yeah. they're bigger and colder. I guess they're, the their guys. temperature regulation is probably mm -hmm. a lot more, like a lot quicker than that. So we just turned over this rock here. We found two red backs. One was under the rock, the other was on some leaf litter here so it's pretty obvious they're active during the night time they're a bit larger than the two we had previously the red of them is a bit more defined more mature animals okay here we go so interesting enough the temperature is warmer here is that possible yeah 4.6 degrees okay so the rocks do a little bit of insulation. Degrees centigrade. And, the animals and then once again, just to be nice to those of you that are doing Fahrenheit. <laughs> it's pretty cold. We'll do a salamander directly. 40. Well, the rock does uh, both heat, right? Yeah. It was a nice day today too. It was like yeah. body. 8, 9 degrees during this afternoon. We'll film. Okay, so. You gotta be careful because these animals can atom automatize atomize atomize i can never say that word their tails so similar with lizards they can drop their tails as a defensive response to get away from or to really evade sad. predation send them here it's cool how they don't kill by barrel poles mm -hmm. i mean if you got a hot rock why would you lighting man you're crawling back in. Put some audio there. Go, 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 Look go, at go. that. That's awesome. So we're back at the first vernal pool. So far the only one we've been to. Oh, wow. And awesome. We've seen this yellow spotted in the water. So we first found him tucked up against. Oh, look at that. He's burying himself. That's awesome. So they're probably still spawning and copulating. Look awesome. at that. Just like that. Gone. Here we have good. another yellow spotted. Wow, this one's really interesting. Look how light colored he is on the sides. Nicely done. That is an incredible photo. Bro, that's incredible. That is just an incredible salamander find. It's really cool. So we just turned one log and found six yellow spotted. One, one, one two. two. Now are they just twined up or are they doing? That's they interesting. Might just... Wow, that one has quite a few. Oh. Hey, be careful around here because yeah, that, um, this one was underneath the leaf litter. What is that? Six? Six under one log. One, one two, two three, four, five, five, six. Them, but we gotta six. be careful. Right, so we're putting back all the salamanders. If you wanna show Brayden quickly. <laughs> light man. Our, light man. Light man. Light man. Tonight. But yeah, all these salamanders are here, so we need to make sure we carefully put them and back. How many did we find under this log, Dion? Seven? Four or five. Six, seven, seven. I believe eight. eight. Oh my god. There is eight there under this yeah. one log. Yeah, just, all right. We're gonna. Lay this back down. Perfect. And we will gently put them back. Whoa. 
want them to go back under the logs in the spots where they were. So they're kind of spaced out a bit. Yeah. They weren't. Where's the reduced pattern? Because I think, I think this one. Yes. I think that was. I think they were together. Okay. So as you can see, they wedged themselves back in safely. Well, friends, there you have it. What a successful outing. We were able to respectfully observe and document these beautiful salamander species while ensuring they were safely returned to each and exact location that they were uncovered under. I hope you guys all enjoyed the first herping video of 2018, and I also hope you learned something new today. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to smash that like button and ding the notification bell to be notified of all future content. More videos coming soon. Thanks all for watching.